Oh, time to make this quick. That's going, hobo. Hello, folks. I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. Do not confuse me with other such YouTube wrestling people. Because remember, at one time I did have a girlfriend, and we did the show together. Hopefully, that's going to change soon. I don't know though. We shall see. But I'm here to talk not about my own personal issues. Let me center myself. I'm here to talk about some AEW. But first, I have to give out the shout outs as I always do. Uh, see here. Perry Setter's hairpiece. Yes, indeed. You, sir, have just got in just in time. You made it under that six count. Mr. Shovels! Yes! I forget what we were talking about. Probably something about Penelope Ford. So that sounds about right. That's okay. You, sir, are a master of the air guitar.
Oh, and by the way, has anyone else seen? And I'm almost tempted to go see it too. The new Bill and Ted movies actually coming out August 21st. Wait, that one movie theater is laid out. We'll see. I haven't gotten my work schedule yet. That's what I'm worried about because it's Wednesday. I need my work schedule on Wednesday so, so I can feel like I'm going back to a job. Who knows, I might have been furloughed again. Or I might have been fired. We'll see. Then I'll have to change corporate Tom's shoes again. He'll be the man. Oh, I'll have to give him the great final suit. Ooh. And finally, Farron! What did you comment to me about? Was it about Florida? Or something? No. I don't think it was. I forget. You, sir, are listening to your briefcase boombox. Maybe Mr. Shovels was something about Florida, too. No, fair. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever it was. Well, that's the quickest I've done show. It's been a while, so let's get right to AEW so I can get to my other job of hoboing, so I can get to sleep, so I can get to work tomorrow, because I, I don't know, we need to hear from a friend, because I guess she fell off her scooter and got road rash and broke a rib by her neck. There's only one rib by your neck. That's... Collarbone. Oh no. We shall see them. So let's start off. It starts with recap time. Only two minutes. This is the near perfect time. Recaps on any wrestling show to open the show just to familiarize the audience with what's going on should only take between two and five minutes. It shouldn't be a 20 minute segment. AEW got that right. Wow. Again. But I think they learned that from Impact Wrestling. Because Impact Wrestling, again, I think at most it was like three to five minute recaps. So again, if it's somewhere in that two to five minute range, it's about right. You, you don't need 20, you don't need 20 minutes a whole segment before your first commercial just to say this is what we did last week this is what's going to happen this week aid impact does it best they give you about again two the five minutes again it depends on what happened and then they go into their first match and then they have then they tell you what's going to happen that's for the show i like that that's pretty good this is a good setup uh, Chris Jericho, the champion, a little bit of the bubbly, 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 was back on commentary for a little bit, and we started off with the Butcher and the Blade taking on FTR, and they changed their names, it's Cash and Dax, Cash is the bald one, who shaved off his goatee, shaved off his Fu Manchu, so he looks like super baby face now. Because I did that once. I just look. I literally look like 20 years younger though. But yet. You saw. Oh, it wasn't that bad. It's, I just missed this stuff. Honestly it doesn't matter. Because it only took like. Four days to grow back anyway. Maybe one day I'll do that again. Who knows? Because I know right now it's like that stiff stubbly part. It grows out a little bit more. It gets like super soft. Especially like right here in the mustache. It's like super soft. But ah, enough about that. Uh, for the most part, this is a classic match. It starts off classic tie-up. into the, They both go into the corner. They both get Backed off. 
And then you have the yay boos and the shoulder tackles by Cash. The headlock takedown again. Very classic mat wrestling. They do the double team, the stomps in the corner. Cash has the Northern Lights spurging suplex. Again, classic all fists, no flips. I think there was only one jump, too. And that was pretty poorly executed. And, of course, all four men in the ring. It's a tag team bedlam. This is a thing AEW really does right as a tag team matches. AEW, the one belt they still seem to need is that trio's champion. I mean, they could lose a TNT belt, have a trio's champion. That would just seem... Or they could lose the woman's belt. No, because I don't, I don't think they've done intergender wrestling yet. I might be mistaken. Maybe not on Dynamite. Maybe on Dark they have, but not on the main TV show. They need to get more progressive. You have the Young Bucks. They have the greatest intergender match with um, Candice LeRae and Joey Ryan. That's the thing that, that I think the Hardys really... I think the Young Bucks were always that weird other tag team. They were known for being in the Bullet Club, and they were known for feuding with the Broken Hardys, of Broken Matt Hardy and, and, and um, Brother Nero. Yes. All four men go in the ring. The Butcher, again, he sees us. He's a scary dude. I don't want to see him in Dark Alley. Tax does the... Heel fake injury, he fakes his shoulder, so he rolled up the Butcher. Uh, the Butcher and Blade. Then they start to do some double teamwork, so again, this is at least, it's not one-sided. Yeah, Cash Wheeler. Yeah, he shaved. That was his name, and, and Dax. I forget what his last name was, but it's Cash and Dax. Those are terrible names. Because I know there was, I want to say there was Styles and Cash. Back in ECW, it was AJ Styles and Kid Cash, were Styles and Cash. Pretty sure that's the way. That's the way it goes. I have to text Matt see if he remembers that. That's okay. I also remember the Hate Club for some reason, though. And I still remember my wrestling knowledge goes back even further to, of course, the Jumping Bomb Angels. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, so the Butcher and Blade, they do some double team. I'm upset that the Bunny's no longer there. We'll get to her later, though. Or at least Allie. Uh, there was a superplex and the elbow. Because I, I didn't think, I don't think he just that elbow distance. Because I saw him jumping, he's like, oh shoot. Because he can see him, he's like, uh oh. I didn't go far enough. That was the only down part of the match. I mean, this was an amazing tag team match. Um, Arn and Ole Anderson have to be feeling so happy about this match. Uh, then there was the the Butcher and Blade hit that assisted flatliner. And then there was no shatter machine. It was like a Meltzer driver. Wow. And that's how FTR won. Impressive opening match. It's a surf and turf match. And then the, they do an interview. The Young Bucks come out. Then eventually Omega and Paige. Paige just holds his drink in hand. Like, well, I'm not going to start anything. I'm just, I'm just here. I wonder if they still have that standard. Because I, I know it was on cable. There used to be... Oh, geez. Back in the 80s, they used to have stricter standards. And it was weird standards. You could smoke on TV, but you couldn't drink... You couldn't portray drinking alcohol on TV. It was just weird back. That was the, the 80s. I'm meaning to miss the 80s for some reason. Then you have the natural. 
nightmares, and this is where we see Allie! Allie has a natural nightmares jacket. And Brandy's a little jealous. Brandy's just jealous because Allie's boobies are bigger than hers. Who knows? Allie looks hot. That does look like she got some work done from back in her day in TNA wrestling. As the bunny. And even then as, as cheerleader Allie. The assistant, I want to say to Madison Rain. I think. That's when Sienna was still around. Again, Impact TNA Global Forces have always had such a stacked women's division. I don't know. And they, they, they screwed it up. Not recently, but they did. Then the next match, we have Penelope Ford, Nyla Rose taking on Chris Satlander and Hikaru Shida. The heel says very simply, started Braun. And oh my gosh. What the heck was that? No. Penelope Ford has that super Brazilian wax. Because she goes down for that split. One day that outfit is not going to cover her. Something interesting is going to happen. Because, yeah, she's smooth like a baby's bottom. And that's not even the right way to say it. <laughs> yeah. There's no hair down there, folks. But, um, so with this match, the heel start the brawl. Chris Tatlander makes a little bit of a comeback, but she misses a big splash on Nyla Rose. Um, she does make a comeback a little bit with a Pele kick. And then Hikaru Shida gets in. She puts, she places Penelope Ford on the top rope. Oh, and she eats so many knees. Wow. Hikaru Shida is the woman's version of Shinsuke Nakamura. The way she delivers those knees so viciously. Uh, Hikaru Shida also hits a suplex. And Hikaru Shida changed up. She changed out her Joshi outfit to become Tifa Lockhart. I miss the old outfit. But I like, I like staying original, but that's just me. Then Ford hit a spike DDT on Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander sold that like a champ. Uh, Ford also hit a Matrix-style stunner. That was great. Nyla Rose just kind of beat up people. Uh, she couldn't be suplexed. And... Again, that, that drape... That, that weird... Whatever that draping thing was Nyla Rose did. Oh! That looked amazing. And, you know, everyone's been talking about the way Nia Jax has been, quote-unquote, injuring people. I don't think the last time she threw... Um, Kyrie Sane <laughs> into the stair. I don't think that was 100% her fault. I think Kyrie kind of flung herself in a little bit too hard. The buckle bomb, yeah, she should have listened. That punch onto Becky Lynch, yeah, she should have. She uh, that was bad. But for all of the junk people talk about Nyla Rose, whether it's founded or unfounded. At least she's a safe big woman worker. I mean, that one thing with Britt Baker, Nyla Rose couldn't necessarily control where she fell. She might have been able to do it better if she tucked a little bit more. But that's such a nitpicky maybe if... I mean, it's just not a clear... It's not a clear no. Like, that's bad. No, that's clear. Nyla Rose, that, that one thing with Britt Baker's knee is that's like, well, maybe if this and that. So when you start getting to those four words in, in, in some kind of order, you can't blame the person. But when you say, no, that was bad, that's really bad. And that's the Nia Jax territory. But that, that one spot looked amazing. Again, it's so hard to predict where... It's kind of hard to predict where you flip and fall to. So, I mean, it looks like... It was, it was an amazing soul job by Hikaru Rashida because it looked like it caught her neck a little bit. Um, not exactly where she wanted to be. Again, it's one of those, like, sometimes the ropes do, do their own things. 
It says AJ Styles and uh, John Mercury. Ropes, ladders, chairs, tables sometimes have a mind of their own. And also, I am the well, we, there were no barricade spots. Wait, there were no barricade spots. Indeed. Uh, Hikaru Shida hit the Falcon Arrow. But it was kicked out. And then Penelope Ford got, got in the ring. Uh, Chris Tatlin, there was some referee distraction. Nyla Rose tossed Penelope Ford the belt. She cold clocked Hikaru Shida with it through the belt out. Hit the perfect plex. Da, 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 da. The perfect plex. Penelope Ford and Nyla Rose wins. Holy Sheeta. This was another good match. I'll tell you what, this was a surf and turf match. And I don't know. Maybe it's just Riho. I'd like to think not, but whenever Riho wrestles, it's the matches. Whenever Riho and Britt Baker wrestle, it's always god awful. But now that Britt Baker's out, Riho's gone, the woman's wrestling has been actually really good. I know Britt does great character work, but. Her, her in-ring stuff is miserable. But, again, that's a whole other thing. Then there was a Darby Allen video and a Britt Baker video. I don't know. This is getting boring. Uh, then we have the Inner Circle taking on Best Friends. And just starts off as a brawl because with the Inner Circle, it's the prime and powerful. You have Hernandez, Ortiz. You have Santana or Ortiz and Jake Hagar. Who's, who's Jack Swagger? Now, I couldn't remember his name from WWE, but it's Jack Swagger. Taking on the best friends of Chuck T, Trent Beretta, and Orange Cassidy. Starts off as Brawl Time, the best friends. They tried, but yeah, they got beat up a lot. Uh, eventually, they did make their comeback. And Hagar just beats on best friends then. In a circle, isolate Chuck T for most of the match, Trent. He tried to do he tried to do like a jumping move onto Hagar. Hagar caught him, put him down, clothesline him outside the ring. I think the one bad thing about the announced team, Excalibur and JR have no chemistry whatsoever. JR gets along with Tony Schiavone. JR freaking loves working with Chris Jericho, I think. But you add an Excalibur. Excalibur is literally that like fifth wheel. And I know he's done a lot in Pro Wrestling Gorilla and Chikara and other places. And he is pretty well established as a pro wrestler. I don't know if he has the chops to cut it with JR. Because at certain instances, JR just seems like, shut up. It almost seems like JR wants to tell him, tell Excalibur to shut up. I mean, I might be seeing things. I mean, you, you guys might be seeing stuff differently, but, but also let me know if, if you start to pick up that vibe too. Like, like JR gets along great with Tony, but again, they've been announcing forever. They've probably been working together forever. Chris Jericho and, 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 and <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris Jericho and JR. Get along tremendously well. So, I don't know. Uh, the Inner Circle eventually eventually isolate Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy hits this, um, like, roll-up, reverse side direction leg sweep into a pin. Best friends get the win off that, but then everyone's... So, the Inner Circle's so upset. And Chris Jericho comes out. They Again, the, let the beatdown begin. And they even bring out the bag of oranges. And by the way, they were like saying these bag of oranges are this like mystical fruit. No, it's Florida. You can get, you can actually get it. Or you used to be able to get like a 10 pound bag of oranges 
for like a dollar, for like, yeah, for like a dollar at some roadside stands. They would give out free orange slices. And they had cool, actually Florida has some pretty, used to have at least. I haven't been to a fruit stand in a while. They used to get like various Christmas gifts there because I know they would have Florida jelly candies, key lime candies, uh, pecan logs were really good. So they have some good things. I think I got my parents a wind chime once. It's your typical farmer stand. It's a little bit better. You can get wine there too. I don't think I've ever had Florida fruit stand wine before, and I don't think I would. But that's a, that's a whole other issue. Uh, and then, so Orange Cassidy gets beat up by a bag with a bag of oranges. So that was kind of funny. Orange Cassidy gets beat up by a bag of oranges. Again, this was a good surf and turf match. And MJF, he goes on and shows off his ring, um, talks smack on the gun, the gun family. Both your sons are loser wrestlers. Yep, you know the standard. Uh, then we have Sammy Guevara taking on Boom Boom Colt Cabana. Uh, they tell each other, "Hey, you're number one. No, you're 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 double number one, right, Chispa? Do you want to tell these people they're number one?" She likes to be on the other camera on that desk, but she doesn't like this camera for whatever reason. She knows she's going on YouTube. Whether she like sees other people, I guess. Who knows? But so with this match, uh again telling each other number one, Colt. Oh, he does those chops he hit her his own hand. Uh Sammy does his flippy stuff. Uh he also does, he tried to do the squat Simone drop. However, uh, Colt Commander countered that. With a big elbow, and then he goes, all oh, duck the road. Whap, 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 whap. Oh, whap. The bionic elbow channeling the leap. Great. Duck the road, baby. Then, let's see here, where was I? Yep, the Dusty Roads. And then we do the Flying Apple. The two hop Superman splash. Hit, Cole Command hit the moonsault, tried the pin. Sammy Guevara used the real GTS. I like that. So when you have your opponent's back on your shoulders, you flip him over, and as he's coming over, then you raise your knee up. That's the real GTS. Or or he called it the GTH. They would go to hell, but it's really the real GTS. And then the Dark Order comes up. And evil Uno's back. And Stu Grayson, so they're back. They were released from Canada. I don't know why. Because everyone knows Canadians don't matter. And then Sammy starts to talk a little bit. And he's like, well, wait a second. No focus on that loser. Focus on me. Because he is like sideburn. He's, I don't know, he hasn't figured out what he's doing with his like facial hair yet. It's like one of those like teenage kids it's like uh, i don't know what i should do should i shave or just do whatever but i don't have those conversations with us. that's weird but then matt hardy comes out and he shows up as regular regular matt hardy and then whenever the broken we guess is the trigger word then we've learned that matt likes mafungo and he's gonna eat sammy Guevara like he's mafungo that's scary and there was a Joey Janela, uh, I am a drunk scene. Dasha tried to inter interview Cole Cabana, but Cole goes into Mr. Brody Lee's office. Alex Marvez tries to interview John Mox. He gets interrupted by Taz. And the machine, Brian Cage. I wonder if Melissa's going to move to Florida now. Oh, wait, they could. Indeed. I'll have to mention that next week. And then we had Cody taking on Mark Quinn in the main event. Well, uh, most part, most part, it starts off as a classic wrestling match by Cody. Uh, Quinn is faster; he does the flippy stuff until Cody hit the Mexican surfboard into the Dragon Sleeper. And then he crotches Mark Quinn into the ring post on the outside during the break. Works over the knees. Cody then you know, straight kicks to the knee, the knee buster. Mark Quinn, he does, he does, he he does a lot of flippy stuff. Still, he does the second rope moonsault, the corkscrew DDT, which looked absolutely amazing. 
did a couple dives and a 450 splash on the stage. However, that knee was not holding up. Uh, Cody took the ankle lock and he turned into near Muda lock. Hey, what's up? So you're kind of running around. He's just pacing around. And then Jake Hagar. So Cody picks up the tap out win. And the whole crowd was saying, holy crap. Because you can't say the S word on TNT, I guess. So they all chanted, holy crap. Which is weird. Here, come here. No, she knows she's going to be on YouTube. And she doesn't like YouTube. She, she likes team space, but not YouTube for whatever reason. Oh well, let's see her. Come here. Being a pest now. But, oh, up there she goes. Then Jake Hagar comes out, um, beats some Cody. Private, uh, the rest of the inner circle come out, beat, beat up Cody. Um, private party, Matt Hardy make the save. Brawl ensues. Holy crap. So we know what's going to happen next week, folks. And that match. Oh, <sighs> It was actually a pretty good match. It was, I'll be consistent. It was a surf and turf match. So it's sometime tomorrow, probably relatively early, I'll be putting, oh, this video is going up tonight. I know tomorrow, she's staring at the window because the lizards and bugs are there. Little buzz, buzz beetles are out. So her just got big too. Uh, so tomorrow, pretty fairly early, I'm going to put up a uh, predictions video. I have to actually make that space here. Uh, Friday, it's going to be SmackDown. Sorry, I'm off. Hmm, who knows, Sunday. Um, I might do an abridged version of Backlash. It all depends if I'm working or if I'm not working. Other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Have a good night, folks. Bye. Hey, wait, do you want to tell everyone they're number one? Come over here. Fussball. Bye.